What's going on, guys? And we are back. But if you don't know what I mean by we are back, we just did a top 10 worst participants of all time. And in this video, we are about to do a top 10 participants of all time to ever do the TV show 60 Days In. And if you don't know, my name is Dante. I think I said that already, but if I didn't, yeah, that's my name. I was a participant on the TV show season seven of 60 Days In. They called me Darius on the TV show. So I feel like I'm qualified to judge everybody else and technically rank where they are in the show's history. So I did the top 10 worst. This is the top 10 best. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it right now and talk about the top 10 participants of all time. Now, number 10 spot is a precious spot. First, people that we're going to talk about. And I said people because it's actually two people, man. Uh, I had to pull up for my season, show some love for Tangi and Rose. These females crushed the game on my season. I personally feel like I said in the last video that we all go on the show for different reasons, man. Some people go on the show to tell. Some people go on the show to try to make a change. Some people go on the show just to experience jail. Some people go on the show because they needed that paycheck. But at the end of the day, we all go on the show for our different reasons, man. And these two females, I think they are an epitome of what going on the show should be about. They went in there trying to make positive changes, trying to help other people. And that's what it's about, man. Y'all saw Tangi, she killed it, put on her talent show and was just trying to inspire the girls. And you saw Rose, her, she was trying to kill it too, helping people legally and trying to let them know that no matter what you go through, that you can make it. And that's something that we need. Positive female black influences in the community, man, because we do see a lot of influences in the community and they aren't positive, man, especially when it comes to like people of color. So with that being said, shout out to Tangi, shout out to Rose, man. They definitely killed it on season number seven. Now, now that I can stop being biased, coming in at the number nine spot, we have from season number five, Brooke. May shock you that she made the top 10 best participants of all time, but I love an underdog story, man. I'm always gonna go for the underdogs all the time. Going in, a lot of people was like, oh, she's not going to make it. She's not going to make it. But then she ended up killing the game, man. She stood up for herself when she needed to stand up for herself. And she just showed that no matter what adversity came her way, that she was going to try to get through it the best that she could. So shout out to Brooke. You killed the game, man. And that's why you made my personal top 10 list. Coming in at number eight, when we hear 60 Days In, we always hear about the big names of the TV show. To me, that stands out as like Abner, Tony, and now Carlos. Those are like some of the big names of the show. But then you have a bunch of people who've actually done the show who really don't get a lot of recognition because they really didn't do anything crazy or wild to stand out in the show. So coming in at the number eight spot, we have Ryan. Ryan is from season number two. He did dope, man. To me, he really did what you're supposed to do. He fit in. He went through the program like he was supposed to do. He didn't go in there with no big head. And he pretty much showed that he could make the program too. Some people look at people who are skinny, short, smaller than the average human being and be like, oh, they're not going to make it. And sometimes we just want to prove you wrong. So shout out to you, Ryan, man. You made the top 10. Again, you went through... Didn't do anything that stood out, but you didn't do anything too crazy. And I feel like that's what you have to do, man. You just went in there being yourself and you made it. In the number seven spot from season number one, to me, he's like one of the goats, if I could be honest. And even though he's low on this list, I have him in the number seven spot. I kind of still put him on the Mount Rushmore of 60 Days In participants. And that would be Zach, man. Shout out to you, Zach. I think you are one of the OGs. And I'm talking to, why am I talking to them like I'm talking to them? I'm not talking to these people. I'm just talking to the viewers, but I'm just whatever. Anyways, so we have Zach coming in in the number seven spot. And I think Zach was pretty dope too, man. He made the participant in the beginning. I'm not going to lie. He came across as kind of cocky and I really didn't like that. But sometimes men, that's what we are. We come across as cocky, especially when we get in a room full of other men. And so that's what you got to be. In like his one-on-one -on -one interviews, you can kind of see his humble side coming out a little bit. So I just feel like he had to put on that persona of toughness around other guys. But once you watch the entire season, he just came into his own and he did really good to be one of the best participants of all time in my book. So even though you're number seven in the top participants of all time, you're still on Mount Rushmore. And I know people are going to be like, well, how did you put him in the top seven? But Mount Rushmore only has four heads. How can he be on Mount Rushmore? Again, it goes back to like, he's one of the goats, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why George Washington's on Mount Rushmore. 
he ain't one of the best presidents of all time. He just happened to have seniority. So I give Zach a lot of respect when it comes to like seniority. So um, with that being said, Zach, number seven spot. Coming in at the number six spot, this is where the controversy will start, I think. Coming in from season number five, I put Abner. Whoa. A lot of people are going to be like, why do you have Abner so low? Uh, and to those people, I would say, you know how many participants was on the show? So that shows a lot of respect to him, right? Because I go back to it's an overall thing for me. Abner was a little cocky, guys. Abner was a little cocky. Come on, man. And then he hit that kid, man. And I know people are going to come to me and be like, well, you hit somebody too. But it was two different instances, man. I feel like I didn't provoke a situation. I was really trying to stand up for somebody versus he provoked a situation when he could have like calmed it down a little bit, man. And again, this is just me being honest. I rock with Abner. Me and Abner be on live. We be talking. We be chilling. But again, I feel like I have to be completely honest with you guys. And you know me, I keep it real. I mean, no matter what people say, I'm going to keep it a buck. So that is why I don't have Abner like in my top three, but he's still in the top five because he did a lot of positive things for the show. And he's definitely a standout of the show. So when you think about 60 Days In, you think of Abner, man. He's like one of the names that you think about, in my opinion. So Abner probably would have made a little bit higher, but there was a lot of little stuff that he did too. And then like the whole promoting the separation of the gangs and stuff like that. Like, I don't believe in none of that, man. Like I've been to jails on the West coast. I've been to jails on the East coast. I've been to jails down South. I've even been to jails overseas, man. And if you feed into the separation of racism, then that's what it's going to be. But if you just don't feed in it, man, and just go on about your business again, it's just all about minding your business, man. So I just felt he pushed the, the racism dilemma or the separation dilemma too much, man. And I just wasn't with that. And again, I know people are going to be like, well, that's just the jail he was in. That doesn't mean you have to feed into it. Everybody didn't feed into it. Some people was just doing their own thing. So that's my opinion on that. Coming in at the number five spot, another controversy will be had in the comment sections. You guys will go mad because I have from season number four. Don't know why I have 10 fingers up. Well, actually, was that eight fingers, two thumbs? But I don't know why I have fingers up. Stephanie, I have in the number five spot from season number four. And Stephanie is hated worldwide. People hate Stephanie, man. But that's my dog, man. Low key, that's my dog, man. Since I became a participant on the show, me and Stephanie became pretty close, man. That's my dog. She's really good people, man. And people just hate on her because she did say some crazy stuff. Let's, I will, hey, Stephanie, you know, you know, you said some crazy stuff to Jackie in the beginning. Let's, let's just be honest. You know, you said some crazy stuff to Jackie, but that was after the show. Y'all had y'all own little beef and I really didn't know too much about it. I, I'm only, I'm personally only judging the show. And from what I seen on the show, she fell in line like she was supposed to she did what she was supposed to do to fit in and survive because also the name of the game of the show is survival you don't want to not survive you don't want your cover to be blown you don't want people to think you're suspicious and people really didn't think she was suspicious at all even if you just go back and see how people was vibing with her how even though i don't agree with stephanie taking them uh i forgot what they call the little mixing the pills medicine and mixing it the whippets or whatever you call i don't even know what they were called taking all the drugs and stuff like that that was a little bit too much. But again, she went in there and she fit in. And that's what it was about, man. She wasn't about to tap out. She fought through how she had to. And even with the Jackie situation, you know, I don't judge their situation at all. Whatever they got going on between them, that's between them. I'm pretty sure that's watered the, under the bridge because it's been years and there's no need to hold animosity. But um, even with the thing where people like she turned her back on Jackie, Sometimes a lot of people put their influence where it shouldn't be, you know, and we we don't know if Stephanie asked Jackie to intervene, which it doesn't seem like Stephanie was like, Jackie, I need you to intervene for me. And it just seemed like Jackie wanted to intervene for Stephanie when she really didn't need to. And that put a little bit too much heat on Jackie. So I just I just hate that their their fallout happened how it happened, man, because 
going in, we don't know each other, man. It's not like Jackie and Stephanie were best of friends. They were both trying to fend for themselves. So I just really hate that that situation turned worse than what it had to be. If they would have just both went in and just did their own thing, that probably would have been best for both of them. But unfortunately, that's not what happened. And they became kind of enemies at the end of it. But for me, entertainment wise, watching the show, Stephanie's probably one of my favorite participants. <laughs> Clearly, she's in my top five. <laughs> Number four. This is probably going to be another one of those things where people are like, oh, you have him ranked too low. But again, it's my list. You don't like my list. Get your own list. And it's going to be season number four's Nate. Um, I'm going to put a lot of respect on Nate's name, man. When I look at all of the participants of all time, if I ever had to compare myself to any other participant, it would probably be Nate. And the only reason I say that is because how Nate integrated himself so well in jail, man. Like he he came across like he was just some other inmate just doing his time trying to go home. And that is what it's about. Nate didn't go in there trying to be pod boss. He didn't go in there trying to be something that he wasn't. He didn't try to go in there and try to be in everybody's business. Nate just did his own thing and allowed everything come to himself. And that's what I tried to do because that's, what jail is all about in real life. Like in reality, when you go to jail, just be yourself, man. And I think that's what Nate was. He was just himself. And he did two seasons, just like Tony got to do. He just did the time. You know, like I said, it wasn't about him doing too much or too little. He was just, he went with the flow. And He's known as like one of the best participants of all time, just how well he integrated himself. And I think that's why people respect him so much because he just chilled, man. And as far as the best participant of all time, I, honestly, I can't give him that label because he just went in and just did his time. You know, if, and I, I want to leave it alone at that because I don't believe in talking about, you know, people when they are gone and I'm, it's nothing negative that I want to say about them, you know, because I don't know Nate. I don't know anything about him. I'm just literally just judging what I saw off the show. So Nate, he did amazing job for the show. He is another participant who I would probably put on the Mount Rushmore when I was talking about Mount Rushmore's. So Nate is definitely one of the goats of the show. And yeah, I, I just got to put him in the number four spot because I don't believe he was the best participant of all time. That that was that was me. That me. I'm just being that was me. No, I'm kidding. Coming in at the number three spot, another controversial person. But when I look at this person, it's not somebody that I personally would put on the Mount Rushmore, but he's in my top three because it's all about the entertainment value of what he brought from his season. And that is season five and six is Tony. <laughs> Tony's in the top three spot just because it's Tony. Let's be real, man. If it wasn't for Tony, man, his season wouldn't have been what it was. He had Dennis trying to copy everything that he was doing. Dennis tried to be his like rival, which I thought was kind of funny. Like, why would you try to go in and be a rival with another participant? But um, uh, like Tony, he went in there and he did his thing, man. He he just did his thing. Again, I just like I said about Abner, there's things that I didn't agree with Tony, like stripping the dude butt naked. I just that's not something that I would have done. But, you know, Tony and Carlos, they have the mentality of going in there and proving that you have to be like that tough guy when you go to prison. And that's not like the case in all situations. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But that's why Tony made the top three. Just because, again, he's like one of the most entertaining people of all time. And if you ever did a poll and say who was the best participant of all time, Tony's name's definitely going to be in the top three. <laughs> so... Tony, just for the entertainment value, just for how he did two seasons back to back, this man left and then came back to jail. And I think that would have been harder than just to stay in both times like Nate did. Like Nate was already there. So him extending his time, that's easy. But you going home and then going back to jail to do another little 60 days, man, there's no way, man, because you just left the jail and there's no way. So Tony is definitely one of the goats of the show. Again, not on my personal Mount Rushmore, but he's in my top 10 strongest participants of all time. Coming in at number two. The next two is probably going to surprise everybody. Number two I have on this list is from season number... Don't even have it written down. But we have 
Ashley. And I think Ashley was on, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have her season written down right next to me, but Ashley, I think she did really, really good for the show. She did what she was supposed to do. She made it through the show. She had drama sometimes, but she overcame it. She broke down. She was emotional, but she didn't allow herself to quit. I just think that she was one of the strongest females to ever do the show, if I can be completely honest. Um, I just didn't want to be biased. That's why I didn't have Rose and Tangie in the top two spot, but I definitely would have put Ashley right there. If I did like a separate top female of all time, it might be Ashley. She might be number one. But uh, it's again, it goes for all different reasons too. You have people in my top 10 for entertainment purposes, for longevity purposes, for what they did to the show, what they meant to the show, how they treated other inmates. So you have all of these reasons why Ashley, I feel is like one of the strongest participants to ever do it, man. Um, you know, she like related to a lot of the people who were back there. She was humble about the situation too, man. So I think that's why Ashley is definitely one of the strongest to ever do the show. And I bet people didn't see that coming. And the number one participant that I have on my list is going to shock the world. I guarantee it. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the name from season number one, Barbara. Barbara, yes. Barbara made my list of the best participants of all time for one reason and one reason only. Barbara demonstrated what the show is about. So again, I go back to the, a lot of people do the show for a bunch of different reasons, man. But if you heard Barbara's mission going in, I believe her husband was in the military at the time. She went in the program thinking that prisoners get treated better than her husband who was in the military. Prisoners eat better than her husband who was in the military, which is completely not the case. I was in the military and I was in prison. So I know that's, I just knew that would be false. I hated Barbara going in. When I say hate, I loathed Barbara going in. I'm just kidding. I really didn't know her, but I didn't like her. I didn't like the person that she was just because of the comments, how she thought prison was just so easy and how she thought inmates just had it so easy. You really don't. But she went in the show. Not only did she learn how horrible jail was, she changed her perspective and admitted that she was wrong. She made it through the program at like a buck 11. I think she might have weighed like 90 pounds at the time. And it goes back to you can't judge somebody by their size. She stood up for herself, got into a little argument or two. And that was like. It was it was it was pleasant watching her character develop. And it's all about character development for me, especially when I watch certain TV shows, especially when she went in saying jail, they have it easy. And then she realized jail's horrible, man. And then she also realized that there's human beings in jail. And that's what people really need to learn. There are human beings who are locked up every single day, man. There are human beings who get locked up. They may not have done the crime. They may have done the crime, but in America, we are supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. But yet when you're in jail, you get treated like you're guilty until you're proven innocent, man. And she went back there and proved like, yeah, uh, jail sucks. And she made it and she stood up for herself just proud of you. I don't even know Barbara. If I knew Barbara, I would find her and send her a uh, heart on TikTok because <laughs> that's all I'm going to do for you. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's my top 10, man. I know you guys are killing me in the comment section. I'm scared to even go read the comment section, but let me know if you agree with my list or if you disagree with my list. Uh, I know there's going to be a lot of disagreements, man, but hey, it's my list. Make your own or let me know your top 10. And if you didn't see the top 10 worst participants, you might want to go see that video because the top 10 worst may surprise you too. So anyways, luckily it's all just an opinion. Make sure that you bless somebody today because I'm going to bless somebody tomorrow. At this point in time, your boy Tay, I'm out.